In this video, we will look at how we can find the inverse of a function. If inverses do opposite things, the regular function takes an input and gives you an output, the inverse takes an output and gives you an input. In other words, to find an inverse function, what we'll want to do is switch the x and y, and then we will solve for y. By the way, we need to remember that f of x is really representing where the y is. So if we add a function like g of x here, that g of x we could think about as the y equals 5 times the cube root of x minus 6 plus 4. And then in order to start finding the inverse, we need to switch any x and y values. In other words, the y becomes an x equals 5 times the cube root of x, which becomes a y, minus 6 plus 4. In order to get to our inverse, we simply have to solve this equation for y. We know we must first isolate the radical by subtracting 4 to get x minus 4 equals 5 times the cube root of y minus 6, and then divide both sides by 5. x minus 4 over 5 is equal to the cube root of y minus 6. Now that the radical is alone, we can clear a root with an exponent by cubing both sides. Let's leave this expression cubed, as there is no advantage in multiplying it out. We'll leave it as x minus 4 over 5 cubed equals y minus 6. Finally, we can get the y alone by adding 6 to both sides. Now we end up with the, parent the, qu the quantity x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6 is equal to y. This, then, is our inverse function. We could say g inverse of x is equal to x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6. Let's take a look at another example where we're asked to find the inverse of a function. Here, the h of x is representing our y equals negative 3 over x minus 1 minus 2. We can then switch any x's and y's, giving us x equals negative 3 over y minus 1 minus 2, and start solving for y. We could start by isolating the fraction and adding 2 to both sides. giving us x plus 2 equals negative 3 over y minus 1. Now, to clear the fraction out, we can multiply by that denominator, y minus 1, on both sides. Again, there's no advantage to multiplying this out, so we'll keep it as y minus 1 times x plus 2 equals negative 3. Now that we've got the fraction taken care of, we can start getting the y alone by getting rid of the factor of x plus 2. Dividing both sides by x plus 2 leaves us with y minus 1 equals negative 3 over x plus 2. To get the y completely alone, all that's left is adding 1 to both sides and we get y equals negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. This, then, is our inverse function. We can represent it as the inverse of h, as h negative 1x, or h inverse of x, is equal to negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. This is the inverse of the function h, it will undo all the work that h does in the original function. To find the inverse of a function, we simply switch the x and y and solve the resulting equation for y.